Today I want to share a psalm that has deeply touched my heart during those moments when I feel overwhelmed and words escape me in prayer. When life feels like a battlefield and discouragement, anxiety or worry act as unseen foes, this psalm becomes a powerful prayer for me. In the next few moments, as I read this precious psalm from the Word of God, I encourage you to open your heart to the Lord and release all your burdens to Him. Psalm 27, verses 1 through 14. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evildoers assail me to eat up my flesh, my adversaries and foes, it is they who stumble and fall. Leave a like for this video and share it at least one time to help us reach more people. Spread the gospel and change more lives comment using the word Amen. Though an army encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war arise against me, yet I will be confident. One thing have I asked of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For he will hide me in his shelter in the day of trouble. He will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me. You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Yucasta, your face, Lord, do I seek. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off, forsake me not, O God of my salvation. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord, be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. I will raise my voice in joyful sacrifices, singing and praising the Lord with music. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Be merciful and respond to me. As I come to talk with you, do not turn away. Do not reject your servant in anger. You have always been my helper. Do not leave me alone now, O God of my salvation. Do not abandon me. Even if my father and mother were to forsake me, the Lord will hold me close. Teach me, O Lord, how to live and lead me along the right path, for my enemies are waiting. Do not let me fall into their hands, for they accuse me of things I've never done, threatening violence with every breath. Yet I am confident that I will witness the Lord's goodness here in the land of the living. I will wait patiently for the Lord, being brave and courageous. Yes, I will wait patiently for the Lord. Now let us pray. My Lord, my Saviour, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the one and only Son of the living God. King Jesus, you are my light and my salvation. With you, whom shall I fear? What shall I be afraid of? When you, Jesus Christ, are our refuge and the fortress of our lives, whom shall we dread? If God is for us, who can be against us? No one, for we serve an almighty, all-powerful, all-conquering God. Even if the wicked rise against us, we will not fear. Even if an army surrounds us, our hearts will not fear, for Jesus Christ holds all power. Lord, you have the final say, and my prayer aligns with Psalm 27, verse 4. One thing I have asked of the Lord, and that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord in his presence all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty, the delightful loveliness, and majestic grandeur of the Lord, and to meditati in his temple, I trust you, Lord, because in the day of trouble, you will be my shelter, my hiding places, and you will lift me up on a rock. Because of this, I will sing praises to your name, O Lord. As your word in Psalm 95, verse 1 to 7 declares, Come, let us sing for joy to the Lord. Let us shout aloud to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before him with thanksgiving and extol him with music and song. For the Lord is the great God, the great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth, 
and the mountain peaks belong to him. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands formed the dry land. Come, let us bow down in worship. Let us kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the flock under his care. Lord Jesus, we express our gratitude for leading you out of darkness and shining your light on our hearts. We boldly declare that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. Once lost, now you have called you to be yours. May your light illuminate every aspect of our lives. Lord, let your light shine in our character, in our words, and in our actions. May each day revolve around you, living to exalt and worship you, for you are an awesome and almighty God. Receive our praises, Lord Jesus, as your word. In Micah 7 verse 8 reminds us, uh, Do not rejoice over me, my enemy. When I fall, I will arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord will be a light to me. May our lives reflect your love and mercy to those around us. Thank you, Lord, for inviting us to be part of your divine plan. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One thing I've asked from the Lord, that I will seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. Here David expresses a singular desire to dwell in the house of the Lord and behold his beauty. This desire reflects David's deep longing for communion with God. It goes beyond seeking God's help. It is an intimate yearning to be in God's presence and behold his glory. Verse 5 For he will hide me in his shelter. In the day of trouble, he will conceal me under the cover of his tent. He will lift me high upon a rock. David acknowledges God as his refuge and protector in times of trouble. The imagery of being hidden in God's shelter and lifted high upon a rock underscores the safety and elevation that comes from trusting in the Lord. David finds comfort in God's secure embrace. Verse 6 And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me, and I will offer in his tent sacrifices with shouts of joy. I will sing and make melody to the Lord David, anticipates victory over his enemies, envisioning his head lifted high above them. His confidence in God's deliverance leads to joyful worship. David expresses his gratitude through sacrifices, shouts of joy and singing, a response of praise for the victory God will bring. Verse 7. Hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious to me and answer me, David calls out to the Lord, seeking his grace and response. Even in moments of distress, David maintains his trust in God's willingness to hear and answer his cries. This verse reflects David's ongoing reliance on God in both times of trouble and times of joy. Verse 8, You have said, Seek my face. My heart says to you, Your face, Lord, do I seek. In response to God's invitation to seek his face, David expresses his wholehearted commitment to pursue God. This dialogue illustrates the personal and relational nature of David's connection with God. His seeking is not merely for blessings, but for an intimate encounter with the Lord. Verse 9. Hide not your face from me. Turn not your servant away in anger. O you who have been my help, cast me not off. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. In this plea, David implores God not to turn away, but to continue being his help and salvation. The earnestness of David's request underscores his dependence on God's ongoing support. He seeks assurance of God's unfailing presence. Verse 10. For my father and my mother have forsaken me, but the Lord will take me in. David acknowledges the human frailty of parental relationships, emphasizing that even if earthly support fails, the Lord remains a faithful refuge. This verse underscores the unique and unwavering nature of God's love and care. Verse 11. Teach me your way, O Lord, and lead me on a level path because of my enemies. David expresses a desire for divine guidance. In the face of enemies and challenges, he seeks God's instruction and leadership. This prayer reflects David's humility and recognition of his need for God's direction. Verse 12. Give me not up to the will of my adversaries, for false witnesses have risen against me, and they breathe out violence. David pleads for protection from adversaries and false witnesses. His prayer for deliverance emphasizes the unjust opposition he faces. 
It also highlights the contrast between the violence of his enemies and his reliance on God's justice. Verse 13. I believe that I shall look upon the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. David declares his faith in anticipating God's goodness. Despite current challenges, he holds firm to the belief that he will witness God's goodness while still alive. This expression of faith contrasts the temporary nature of difficulties with the enduring goodness of the Lord. Verse 14. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Wait for the Lord. In a closing exhortation, David encourages waiting on the Lord. He calls for strength and courage, emphasizing the value of patience and trust in God's timing. This final verse serves as a reminder to remain steadfast in faith, even when awaiting God's answers. As you meditate on Psalm 27, may you find inspiration, strength, and a deepened trust in the Lord amid life's challenges. As you delve into the rich verses of Psalm 27, immerse yourself in David's profound trust in God's protection, guidance and presence. This passage invites us to anchor our confidence in God amid life's challenges, seeking him wholeheartedly. David's resolute faith in God's light and salvation sets the tone, emphasizing that with God on our side, fear has no place. Even in the face of enemies, he believes that God's power will cause them to stumble. David's courage shines through as he declares that, even in the severest challenges, his heart remains unafraid, confident in God's deliverance. David's one deep desire is unveiled, to dwell in God's house continually, relishing the beauty of his presence. This reveals David's profound thirst for intimacy and eagerness to experience the wonder of God's companionship. Amid troubles, David trusts that God will provide a safe dwelling sheltering him in sacred refuge. The imagery of being set high upon a rock symbolizes divine protection above adversity. Anticipating triumph over enemies, David envisions a future where shouts of joy and music will resound in praises to the Lord. His heartfelt plea follows, urging God to hear his voice and respond with mercy. David's heart prompts him to seek God's face zealously, acknowledging dependence on God's compassion David pleads for continued divine presence, trusting in God's helper and saviour roles. Despite human weaknesses, he pleads not to be rejected or forsaken. Recognising the transient nature of earthly relationships, David trusts the Lord to receive him, even if family forsakes. Amid challenges, David seeks God's guidance and instruction, asking to be led on the right path. He pleads for protection from enemies and false accusations, recognizing the harm caused by malicious intent. David expresses unwavering confidence in seeing God's goodness in the land of the living. In conclusion, David exhorts waiting on the Lord, encouraging strength, courage, and patience. As you reflect on these verses, may you find inspiration and a renewed longing for intimacy with God, echoing David's desire to dwell in his presence throughout your life. Verse 9, David acknowledges his reliance on God's help and pleads for his continued presence. He asks God not to turn away, recalling God's history of guidance and salvation in his life. Verse 10, despite potential faltering earthly relationships, David is confident that God will never abandon him. This verse reflects David's deep conviction in God's unwavering love and acceptance. Verse 11, David desires to know God's ways and seeks his guidance. He asks for direction and wisdom to navigate challenges, trusting that God's guidance will lead him on the right path. Verse 12, recognizing threats from enemies and false witnesses spreading lies. David pleads with God to protect him from their schemes. Verse 13, despite challenges, David holds on to his confidence in God's goodness. He anticipates witnessing God's blessings and provisions in his current life, not just in the distant future. Verse 14, David concludes the psalm with an encouragement to wait patiently for the Lord's guidance, strength, and deliverance. In times of uncertainty, he advises taking heart and finding strength in the Lord's promises. As you listen to the commentary on Psalm 91, be mindful of the layers of God's protection, guidance, and deliverance for those who place their trust in Him. The key theme is putting your trust in God. 
verse 4, the psalmist continues to describe God's protective care. Under his wings, you find refuge, and his truth becomes a shield and buckler. This imagery evokes a sense of being sheltered and defended by God's truth. Verse 5, the psalmist shifts to a metaphor of a shield and buckler, emphasizing God's faithfulness as a protective shield and defensive armor. The mention of the terror by night and the arrow that flies by day encompasses both unseen and visible threats. Verse 6, the psalmist affirms that neither the pestilence that walks in darkness nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday will harm those under God's protection. This reinforces the comprehensive nature of God's safeguarding. Verse 7, the psalmist acknowledges that thousands may fall at their side and 10,000 at their right hand, yet no harm will befall them. This emphasizes God's selective and powerful protection, even in the midst of widespread challenges. Verse 8, the psalmist encourages contemplation of God's protective care, observing the fate of the wicked while dwelling securely in God's refuge. This verse highlights the contrast between those who reject God's shelter and those who find safety in Him. Verse 9, the psalmist expresses confidence in God as their dwelling place. This acknowledgement reinforces the idea that God's protection is not just occasional but a constant secure abode for those who choose to abide in Him. Verse 10, the psalmist reiterates God's defense against evil, emphasizing that no evil shall befall them, nor shall any plague come near their dwelling. This reinforces the notion that God's protection extends to various forms of harm. Verse 11, the psalm takes a celestial turn as the psalmist speaks of God assigning his angels to guard and protect those who abide in his presence. This verse underscores the active role of angelic beings in ensuring the safety of God's people. Verse 12, the psalmist highlights the angels' involvement in carrying God's people to prevent stumbling or falling. This imagery emphasizes the comprehensive nature of God's protection, not just from external threats, but also from internal vulnerabilities. Verse 13. The psalmist declares victory over enemies and challenges, symbolizing the triumph of God's people over adversity. The imagery of trampling on lions and serpents represents overcoming powerful and cunning adversaries. Verse 14. The psalmist conveys God's response to those who set their love upon him. God promises to deliver and honor those who acknowledge him, further emphasizing the reciprocal nature of the relationship between God and his people. Verse 15, God himself speaks in this verse, assuring that when his people call upon him, he will answer. This underscores the accessibility of God and his responsiveness to the cries of his children. Verse 16, the psalmist concludes with God promising long life, satisfaction, and the manifestation of his salvation to those who dwell in his presence. This verse encapsulates the fullness of blessings for those who trust in God's protective care. Psalm 91 is a powerful expression of the comprehensive and unwavering protection God provides to those who seek and dwell in his presence. It encompasses physical, spiritual and emotional security, emphasizing the trustworthiness of God's refuge. Verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. This verse introduces the idea of angelic protection, suggesting that God assigns angels to watch over and guard those who have taken refuge in him. The angels are entrusted with ensuring the safety of God's people in all aspects of their lives. Verse 12, in their hands, they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. The imagery of angels holding God's people in their hands conveys a sense of active and attentive care. The protection extends to preventing any harm or stumbling, emphasizing the meticulous safeguarding provided by these celestial beings. Verse 13. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. This verse employs powerful symbolism, portraying the authority and victory of those under God's protection. Treading upon lions, cobras and serpents signifies overcoming and triumphing over formidable adversaries. Verse 14. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. 
God himself speaks in this verse, highlighting the reciprocal nature of the relationship. Those who express love and devotion to God will experience deliverance and elevation. Knowing God's name signifies a deep personal relationship with him. Verse 15, he shall call upon me and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. Continuing Goad's response, this verse underscores the accessibility of God through prayer. God promises not only to answer, but also to be present in times of trouble, providing deliverance and honor to those who call upon him. Verse 16, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The psalm concludes with a promise of abundant life and the revelation of God's salvation. This verse encapsulates the fullness of blessings for those who have made God their refuge, emphasizing the richness and completeness of the life God intends for his people. Psalm 91, with its vivid imagery and powerful assurances, remains a source of comfort and inspiration for those seeking God's protection and guidance in their lives. Verse 11, for he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. This verse highlights the role of angels as protectors. God assigns angels the responsibility of safeguarding and guiding individuals in every aspect of their lives. It emphasizes the comprehensive nature of God's protection through these celestial beings. Verse 12, in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. Continuing the theme of angelic protection, this verse uses imagery to illustrate the meticulous care of angels. They are portrayed as holding and supporting individuals, preventing them from stumbling or facing even minor harm, symbolized here by dashing a foot against a stone. Verse 13, you shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent you shall trample underfoot. This verse employs powerful symbolism, portraying the authority and victory of those under God's protection. Treading upon lions, cobras and serpents signifies overcoming and triumphing over formidable adversaries, both physical and spiritual. Verse 14, because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. God responds to those who express love for him and have a deep personal knowledge of his name. The verse underscores the connection between love for God and the assurance of divine deliverance and exaltation. Verse 15. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. This verse highlights the accessibility of God through prayer. God promises to answer those who call upon him, assuring his presence during times of trouble. The pledge includes divine deliverance and the bestowal of honor on those who trust in God. Verse 16, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. The Psalm concludes with a promise of a fulfilling and prolonged life for those who remain under God's protection. It emphasizes God's desire to provide both physical well-being and spiritual salvation to those who place their trust in him. So, Father, I stand on the promise of your word in Psalm 37, verse 25, declaring that I have never seen the righteous forsaken nor their descendants begging bread. In the midst of uncertainties and challenges, I anchor my faith in your unchanging character. Lord, I surrender my fears, frustrations, and burdens to you. I believe in the truth of Psalm 91, 10, that no evil shall befall me or my family, and no plague shall come near our dwelling. Your angels surround us, and I trust in your protective embrace. Even when circumstances may seem overwhelming, I choose to believe that you are in control. You are the God who provides shelter to your children, and I find refuge in your shadow. Lord Jesus, be our hiding place. Cover us with your grace and mercy. May your peace that surpasses all understanding guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. As I face the unknown future, I rest in the assurance that you are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I place my trust in you, knowing that you hold our tomorrow. Thank you, Father, for being a faithful and loving God. Heavenly Father, I come before you with a heart full of gratitude and trust. Your word in Jeremiah 17 verse 7 declares that blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord and whose hope is in you. I declare, Lord, that my trust is in you. 
I am like a tree planted by the waters, rooted in Jesus Christ. Father, all honor belongs to you, and I humbly lift my prayer to you, because I need you. I need your constant protection, favor, and mercy every day. I seek you for guidance, and I look to your presence to always surround me. In this moment, I ask that you cover me, Lord. Cover me each and every day with your grace and protection. Be my shelter and my refuge, sir. I place all my needs before you, knowing that you are the source of every provision. Thank you for hearing this prayer, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Being and instead, place that trust in God when facing the enemy called uncertainty. It's about acknowledging that while we may not know the outcome of certain situations, God does. His knowledge is complete, and He is in control of all things. Even when we face unknowns, uncertainties, or challenging circumstances, we can find assurance in trusting the Almighty. Psalm 91 verse 14 to 15 provides a comforting promise. Because He has set His love upon me, therefore I will deliver Him. I will set Him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. In times of uncertainty, speaking the word of God over your life can be a powerful affirmation. Declare that the watchful eye of the Lord Jesus Christ is upon you. Affirm that the hand of the Almighty God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, is over your life. When facing uncertainty, Proclaim that you will not be destroyed because God is watching over you, guiding you and lifting you up when you fall. Trust in his faithfulness to preserve you. Jeremiah 17 verse 7 to 8 reinforces the importance of trusting in the Lord. Blessed with spiritual security is the man who believes and trusts in and relies on the Lord and whose hope and confident expectation is the Lord. For he will be nourished like a tree planted by the waters that spreads out its roots by the river and will not fear the heat when it comes but its leaves will be green and moist and it will not be anxious and concerned in the year of drought nor stop bearing fruit to fully trust in god one must relinquish full control abandoning trust in oneself or others and placing that trust entirely in god in doing so we find peace and security even in the face of uncertainty I lift up every person in need of your intervention, Lord. In moments of uncertainty, may your light surround them, your love overwhelm them, and your power protect them. Wherever they are, may your presence be found, and may they be guarded by your comforting presence. I declare a blessing of peace, assurance, and unwavering faith over their lives. May their trust in you be like that of a child placing complete reliance on a loving parent. I pray that their faith looks to you for protection and provision. Lord Jesus, in the midst of challenges, you are the God who moves mountains and causes walls to fall. Regardless of everything happening around us, we affirm that you are in control, seated on your throne. You are a good God who never leaves us, nor forsakes us. Psalm 94 verse 19 reminds us that in times of great anxiety, your consolation brings joy, we trust in your ability to make a way where there seems to be no way. When surrounded by the enemy, you are the deliverer. In a multitude of problems, we call on the powerful name of Jesus Christ, trusting you to be the solution and the way out. Lord, we lean on you, surrendering all control, and we ask for your divine intervention. Speak the words, peace be still in the storms we face. Be the chain breaker and make a way where there seems to be no way. As we unite in prayer, May your presence be felt, and may your power be manifested in the lives of those who call upon your name. Heavenly Father, I lift up every person who is listening right now, especially those facing uncertainty and challenges. Grant them the strength to stand firm with unwavering faith. May they walk by faith and not by sight, finding their refuge in the one and only Saviour, Jesus Christ. You alone are our rock and our refuge, and we run to you for strength and guidance. For anyone feeling uncertain about the next steps or how to handle what's ahead, I pray for wisdom and clarity of mind. Your word declares in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 33 that you are not the author of confusion, 
but of peace. We stand against any confusion in our lives, trusting in your guiding peace. For those who are afraid about what tomorrow holds, remind them of your promise in Isaiah 43 verse 1, that you have redeemed them and called them by name. May they know that they belong to you and that you, as a just God, hold tomorrow in your hands. Lord, for anyone battling with uncertainty and a troubled mind, I pray that the peace of Christ may rule in their hearts, as stated in Colossians 3 verse 15. Let your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard their hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We surrender all our uncertainties to you, Lord, knowing that you are in control and that your plans for us are good. It is my sincere prayer that you experience the peace of Christ ruling in your hearts. I thank God for hearing our prayer. There comes a crucial moment in the life of a believer when a decision must be made. A time when you say, I will stand strong and follow the word of God, regardless of what I have to give up and whom I have to let go of. This decision is profound. It involves choosing to do the godly thing, to forgive even when it's difficult, and to stand in faith, especially when the situation seems insurmountable. In my personal belief, a strong believer in Christ is someone who relies solely on God, free from any crutches. A crutch is anything that hinders complete surrender to God, be it money, personal ability, or placing more trust in human opinions than in God's word. We must remove every crutch from our lives, declaring that we stand entirely on Jesus Christ or not at all. Our walk should be one of complete faith in him. As stated in 2 Corinthians 12 verse 9, God's grace is sufficient for you. His power is made perfect in weakness. Boast gladly about your weaknesses, for it is in those moments that Christ's power rests upon you. May you find the strength to stand strong, fully trusting in Jesus Christ. May his grace be your sufficiency. Amen. May we reach a place where we willingly remove every crutch in our lives, relying solely on the grace of God. May we understand in the depths of our hearts that his grace is indeed enough for us and our families. In our journey of faith, may we find that nothing and no one else will do, for only Jesus is sufficient. May this realisation lead us to a place of complete surrender and dependence on him. This, Lord, is our prayer. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please feel free to type Amen in the comment section if this message resonates with your spirit and you'd like to join in prayer. Your participation extends the reach of this message, touching more lives and spreading the message of faith and hope. To further support the dissemination of this message, consider sharing this video with a friend or family member. Click the like button, subscribe to the channel, and enable notifications to stay updated with more content that nourishes the soul and uplifts the spirit. The journey continues, and the Holy Spirit remains our constant companion, our ever-present guide. In him we find the wisdom, strength, and love we need for each day.